Today's video is all about changing out your stainless steel braided hose on your toilet. Now, word on the street is you should do this every 10 years. These things do not last forever and when they go, it is awful. This is another case for a whole house water monitor system. In any case, good on you for checking this out right now and hopefully it's not because you had a leak. During our last swap in the location of our cloth diaper rinsing sprayer here, the supply line connector at the toilet fill valve sprung a leak. So it was time to pull out tongue and groove pliers and a towel. You can also use an adjustable wrench for the connector on the shutoff side. But if you don't have one big enough, like this 200 millimeter one, and the fill valve side is stuck, you'll still need tongue and groove pliers or something along those lines. First, turn off the water at the shutoff to the toilet. Then, lay the towel down below the supply line. While a catch pan would be nice, as you'll see, it isn't always the easiest to direct the water, at least with the auto shutoff style toilet connector we're replacing. A towel spread everywhere will catch all the water trying to evade a catch pan. Next, take off the old supply line. The fill valve side may be hand tight, but if it's been on there a while, or if there's any corrosion, you may have to use a little more persuasion with tongue and groove pliers. Then move on to the other side. It doesn't really matter which side you do first. Ideally, it might be the shutoff side since it's lower and perhaps the water could be better guided out. Next time. At this point, now that it's off, either take a picture of the old tag or better yet, bring it to the store or have it right there by you if you order the replacement online. This way, you know you have the correct connections on both ends and the correct length. I recommend buying a braided steel line for durability, leaving the leak potential for either end of the line and nowhere in between. When we went to Home Depot to look at our options, we ultimately ended up choosing this Fluid Master supply line. For an additional dollar, it came with a five-year warranty. And given our sprayer situation, the Quick Seal water connector would prevent us from over-tightening the gasket once we remove the sprayer for the last time. Now, that's not to say that a five-year warranty covers water damage, paying anyone to install it, or anything above just getting a replacement supply line. But a boldly stated five years is more than a one-year warranty, or even no printed warranty on the tag, meaning Fluidmaster thinks their product will last longer. And for seven bucks, skip a Starbucks in five years and buy a new supply line. I'll tell you about what I'm doing with regards to preventing water damage towards the end of the video. Now it's time to reverse everything we just did taking it off. After you get the shutoff side hand tight, give it an extra quarter or half turn with the tongue and groove pliers. Just snug, not too tight. The only difference is on the other side. There are no tools allowed. Just twist it in place until you hear the click. I will admit it was a little tough between the awkward position and attempting not to hit the phone on the tripod. Once everything is connected, it's time to turn the water back on and check for leaks. Even if there aren't any, I'd leave a towel in place for a day. I specifically chose this one because it's one of our grungy towels and more importantly, if it gets wet, you can see a change in color, making a small leak fairly obvious. It's definitely easier to see than a drop on the floor. Here are some additional installation tips. The toilet tank only needs to be drained if the fill valve is replaced. If you decide on a regular connection, rather than a click seal connector on the fill valve side of the supply line, you'll still only want to make it hand tight over tightening can cause the connection to fail. While ours was immediate, a failure may not be obvious for months or even years down the road as pressure and thermal expansion stress the connection, which I will explain in next week's video. I recommend leaving the tag in place. It's just so much easier having it in hand than going to the store or online in 10 years or five years and second guessing the connection. However, if you don't know what you have, Fluid Master also has a universal kit so you can modify the supply line connector to match with your shutoff valve. It looks like they've updated the packaging, but I found an older one where you can see the 3 8 inch, 7 16 and half inch adapters, which are now tucked inside the cardboard packaging. 
Another reason to leave the tag intact is for warranty purposes. Some manufacturers require the tag to stay in place or it will void the warranty. While this Fluid Master warranty requires a receipt or photo, keeping the tag in place is insurance if you misplace the receipt. If you have questions, definitely reach out to the manufacturer before choosing your new supply line. I called Fluid Master customer service to get clarification on this issue, and I was really impressed with no wait time and the knowledgeable and personable agent. Now that we have the tag on the supply line, we have somewhere to write the date we installed it for record keeping. You can also add a reminder five or 10 years down the road on your Google Calendar to change your toilet connector. If you're in the situation where you found this video as the result of a burst toilet supply hose, I'm in the middle of a video series on leak detection, as well as a series on water monitor and shutoff systems, which would detect even a small leak starting from a failing supply line. So definitely check those out if you're looking to prevent water damage. I also have links in the description for the tools and supply hose used for this project. Thanks for watching. I hope you have peace of mind now and I will see you next Friday.